It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports, where we'll see a brawl inside the NFC West. It's the Los Angeles Rams and the Seattle Seahawks, and it's coming up next. With the beautiful Puget Sound just to our west, you get a look inside Lumen Field here in Seattle, Washington. Today, we've got an intriguing NFC matchup lined up here as it'll be the Los Angeles Rams taking on the Seattle Seahawks. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, the wait is over. The regular season is upon us. It is kickoff weekend around the NFL. Our two teams here getting in a final tune-up, but let's look ahead to the 2023 season. What are you going to be watching for? How about some of the recognizable new faces in new places? Aaron Rodgers, Derek Carr, Odell Beckham Jr. The identity of teams under new coaches in places like Houston, Carolina, and Denver. And then, of course, the rookies. After the draft, we want to see how they perform. the kicker Jason Myers to get this one started and off we go from Seattle and he will make it to the 20 yard line and no further so here are the Rams set to go to work on offense and they're led by a man who topped the 50,000 yard mark in passing for his career a season ago in year 15 now here's Matthew Stafford Stafford the Rams won it all in Super Bowl 56, but last season was a stark contrast to that. The Rams need their quarterback to recapture his form from two seasons ago to help spark another postseason run. Stafford's throw pulled in by Robinson here. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. Operating from the 27 now. Here's second and three. Now the fourth year man, it's Cam Akers. And he's going to have a Rams first down as he gets this up past the 30 to the 32. A nice carry by Akers, and what a journey it was for him last season. Coming off of injury, away from the team for a while. He did come back later in the season and led them with almost 800 yards. Still scratching the surface of what he can do. He can be a dynamic presence on the field. On first down, they'll stay with Akers on the ground. And he'll work this one up to about the 38. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. The success there, Charles, coming on the outside of the field, the ground game. Curious to see if that continues as we progress. Yeah, we often talk about a variety in play calling and usually between run and pass. But in this case, with strictly the run game, you can be creative there as well. Run it inside, run it outside, keep the defense off balance. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Well, anytime he reads man coverage, I don't think it's going to be the only time he'll try and hit that route to the outside in this game. He'll test the perimeter, but that time, they were up to the challenge. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Here's Stafford. Look in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Rams first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Now we're going to get a timeout here as it looks like there's a Seahawk injured on the play. Well, hopefully, obviously nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, going to take a peek and we'll take a break. They'll run on first down with Akers. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down. You're set up very well for the rest of the drive. Now a second and six. Six. 
Out of the gun, Stafford. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. That's already the third time they've looked his way on this opening drive. He's caught one of the three. That doesn't mean they won't continue to go in that direction. It feels like they think they've got something good going there, and they think those numbers are going to increase. And the line to gain here is the 37 on third down. Stafford. Pressure comes. He's taken down by the Seahawk defense. That sack, it goes to Boye Mafe. Well, we knew this guy wasn't especially fleet of foot, but he tried to conjure up some escapability, but there was no way he was getting away on that one. So on fourth down, on is Ethan Evans to punt for the Rams. And back deep is DJ Dallas. This is taken around the 12. Nice punt, but good work on the return to get back 11 yards. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. So the Seahawks ready to take over on offense, and it is a first-time Pro Bowler who leads him out, Charles, in his 11th year now, Geno Smith. When the Seahawks named Smith the starter last season, it gave him an opportunity he wasn't sure he would get again. And then he became one of the best quarterbacks in football and sustained it across a full 17 games when he come back player of the year. Saved his career with last season and keeps the Seahawks as true contenders. So they'll get nothing out of that play and it's second down. Now the old pass completion for no gain, not something you want to call up out of the playbook too often. Yeah, most offensive coordinators don't have that on their play sheet. So they've got to go back and scramble after this one. But right now with what they're telling receivers about making sure you take care of the ball in open field sometimes the fighting for extra yardage doesn't come as a result that and good tackling can lead to no yards gained that one covers 24 yards it's a first down press coverage on the outside and for defenders that's the ultimate risk reward if you take the risk can you reward yourself by keeping them on the line of scrimmage? But no, not on that one. Got the step on him. Now it's just a matter of laying the ball out there for him to go get it. The leading rusher among rookies a season ago. Here's Kenneth Walker. And he's going to take this one across midfield and into Ram territory. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? To throw on second down is Smith. That to the sideline, and it's intercepted. And the Rams are going to have it here just past the 25. Well, look, we're watching a quarterback here that's obviously been around for a long time. That's a throw he wishes he had back. He certainly does, but as you well know, this is a guy that's used to taking a few chances, used to fitting it into tight windows. These are throws that he's made before. Didn't happen to get it completed in this case. So the Rams coming back onto the field, their second drive of the game. The last series for him, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. On first down, they'll start out with Akers. And he'll get this up just shy of the 30. Here's second and seven. Now Stafford. Now get this one to Cup complete. And Cup going to pick up a Rams first down as the tackle going to be made up at the 37. Stafford to his number one guy, Cup, for Los Angeles first. That time they hit him out of the slot on the drag. And that route takes some fortitude from the guy running it because he knows he's going through the briar patch, as I like to call <laughs> it, right? He's trying to work his way through all that traffic. And Pretty good burst there as he'll get this across midfield and down to the 46. A good pickup, 17 yards, and also a Rams first down. 
Nothing too fancy, just to carry up the middle, but a successful carry up the middle against his 3-4 defense. And to be able to do that, what do you have to control? The nose guard, right? Got to be able to move him, otherwise you're not getting anything up the middle. Nice job by the center. Got a little help from one of his friends playing guard. Now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Demarcus Robinson, the intended target on that one. And it's second down. The fake to Akers. Here's Stafford. And a quick shuffle pass here is complete. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Stafford going to give this to Akers. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. And it appears we've got a member of the Rams shaken up on that last play. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Throwing is Stafford. Short throw, it's Higby. They'll give him four yards there. Third and seven now. To throw is Stafford. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he is going to have a Rams first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What do the guys in the locker room call him? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push-off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. A give up the middle to Akers. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Pretty effective run there, and now they can start to smell that end zone. Pound the rock. Make sure you use your old line to set the tone of dominance and physicality, and pound the rock. Second and a couple. They'll go again here with Akers. And he stopped after a gain of one. Not enough. Still a yard to go on third down. Haven't been a defensive coordinator yet. I think second and two is a fun situation to try and defend. The playbook is wide open for an offense partner. Nice job. Hold him to one after that eight-yard pickup on first down. Here now, third and a yard. They'll try and run for this with Akers. He's going to be a yard short. Needed two, but only got one. Fourth down. Partner, when you're not able to run the ball successfully, it really messes everything up for an offense because no longer are you setting the tone and dictating the game. If you do want to throw the ball, play action's kind of gone out the window because they don't respect the run. And last but not least, you don't get to dictate it all when you want to throw the football, and that really hurts you as an offense. They'll run for it with Akers. And they are going to stop him on fourth and one as they'll wind up going backwards. Sean McVay's gamble does not pay off. And this long drive is going to wind up yielding nothing. And defensively, they were ready for that. A full-on blitz on fourth down, and they stop him short of the marker. Oh, and someone's got to feel really good about that, and that's the defensive coordinator. He dialed up a great run blitz defense, and they hit it just right. Stack and he's going to go down. Back in his own five-yard line, it's a sack. Well, Aaron Donald just so strong, they can't block him, and he records the sack. Well, if an offense is going to throw the ball in this part of the field, any pass rusher will tell you that's his favorite part. Gets a chance to get after the quarterback. It's almost like a reverse red zone. They can create points using their defense, and this time they take their man down. And Smith's throw into the hands of Fan. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 30. The catch and run, good for 24 yards. 
good job there of getting his tight end involved because he lines up on the right side of the formation, just works his way across the field. I really like how they were in sync on that one. He spotted the open gap in the zone, and his quarterback found him, and they get a first down. Walker now at first and 10. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. All runners count on their eyes to find the gaps and creases to find open space. There was absolutely none on that one. Totally swallowed up on that play. Now is second and 10. Sticking with Walker on second down. And he'll earn a couple of tough yards past the 30 to the 31. They'll come up now third and nine. Throwing now is Gino. That ball nearly intercepted, but he could not hang on. Oh, a pick there certainly would have been nice. Instead, at least, it'll be fourth down. Well, they've moved the ball okay here in these first two drives, but this one's going to, again, amount to nothing. They've got to start dialing up some plays that allow them to finish drives with points. And here's Dixon to punt now as he gets this one away. And a fair catch signaled for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Rams will go on offense here with the first and 10. They'll begin on the ground with Akers. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. When you're lateral to the line of scrimmage, linebackers keep those shoulders square so they can go up and down. But when it's time to go, turn your shoulders just like a running back. Get through the line and hit the runner in the backfield. Here's Stafford. Complete. Jefferson to target. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And it's third and four now. Stafford. Under pressure, and he'll go down. They'll sack him on what ought to be the final play of this first quarter. Bobby Wagner, he's the culprit, causes a loss of five, and it brings up fourth down. We're scoreless after one. The Rams with the football here to begin the second quarter as they've got it with a fourth down coming up. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. That's pulled in at the 32. Eight yards on the return following a punt of 41. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. We've seen both of these offenses still sort of in that figuring things out phase, but I suspect some action on the scoreboard soon as they start out here first and 10. Out of the gun, Smith. And that'll be off the mark too far out in front, and it's incomplete. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and 10. On second down, it's Walker. Takes this up right near the 45-yard line. Five yards, now it's third and five. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had the incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. From the gun on third down, Smith. Throw there, and it's going to wind up incomplete. Not many boos just yet from this home crowd, but they may be starting soon as I'm starting to detect an uneasy murmur through this crowd. This offense, they've been lifeless in this first half. And now here's another punting situation and a fourth down. On fourth down, ready to punt, Michael Dixon.
And he fields it cleanly. That'll go as a 39-yard punt. Give him nine on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. The Rams offense now making their way out to take over. And partner, I know so far, I and mean, we're still in the first half, but you love this game as a defensive guy. Zero to zero. We'll see if the offense can get going on this drive. And the defense loses him. It's complete. Down to the 10. Touchdown, L.A. Van Jefferson, 78 yards. And the Rams post the first points of the ball game as they take the lead here in this second quarter. After a fairly uneventful first quarter, that last play, that'll make a few highlight clips. It certainly will, and you're exactly right. The first quarter almost felt like a feeling out process, didn't it? Both teams, okay, what are we going to do? Looks like they've ramped things up just a little bit to start the second quarter. Extra point by Moore, up and good. And it's now a 7-0 game. Following the touchdown, here's Marr to kick it away. DJ Dallas to return it from his end zone. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. They'll be looking to match that touchdown from a moment ago. 7-0 is the score as they begin with a first down. From the gun, here's Smith. And this one is going to be off the mark, too far out in front. Well, I guess we just discovered that someone is certainly not going to sit back and just take it in this game, huh? No, they were trying to get that touchdown back in one shot. One shot, trying to help out his defense and let the other team know they were coming after him. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and ten. Now Geno. And the catch is made here by Tyler Lockett. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. His first catch of the game, good for 11 and a first down. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. You've got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. Now a play fake, and it's Smith. And this will be caught at the 30. And he's brought down after a very nice gain. That's good for 28 yards. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Straight ahead, Walker. And the running lane's non-existent in this first half as they'll stop him behind the line. The all-everything defensive tackle, Aaron Donald, the one who made the play there. I have a feeling they'll stay committed to running the football, especially on the early downs. They just haven't had a whole lot of success just yet. So their task a little bit more difficult now. Second and 13 that they're walking up on. No chance to get away there for Smith as he goes down. Aaron Donald, that is now two sacks for him here in this first half. The drive had started well after a punt last time. Now it's slowed down a bit, and let's face it, they don't want to punt the ball in back-to-back -back series. They want a sustained drive on this one. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. Problems on third down so far in this first half. Relatively small sample size, but they're now 0 for 3. And the average in the league, somewhere around 40% on third down for offenses. So what's the answer to this? Either convert them or don't get the third down in the first place. Get your big chunks of yards on first and second down. Myers kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. 
So the margin shrinks there as they get the field goal to draw them a bit closer here in the second quarter. Yeah, nice snap, nice hole. They just want to keep this game close, so give them credit for finishing that one off with three. now converted on the field goal try now he's on to kick it away taken at the goal line and he won't get this to the 20 yard line as he's down at the 19 the offense coming back out and there's van jefferson leading him making his presence felt early in this one first half already over the century mark how about the yards per completion too that's a pretty darn good number there Number of catches, but he's shredding defense. Is getting big yardage with each and every one of them. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. And I think he was a little surprised to see the ball sitting out there like that. That's a ball he had a chance to come away with, but it winds up an incomplete pass. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Stafford now to throw. And that one to the right side and incomplete. No receivers open, so who's forced to put that one into Puget Sound? That's a great job defensively blanketing those receivers. And ultimately, a smart idea by him just to get the ball out of there. This offense so far on third down, two for five to this point. This is third and ten. Now it's Stafford. chance to scan the field there it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice the protection was that good unfortunately for him the coverage downfield equally good Ethan Evans on now to punt and he's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away here come the Seahawks now set to take over on offense Last time out, you remember their drive stalled, but thanks to their kicker, booted a long field goal to at least get him three. Now here, they'll try to do better and find the end zone. And in our experience, how much fun is it for coaches to know that they've got a kicker who can nail it from long distance? Now, the hard part is, as an offensive play caller, you don't want that in your head too much where you're relying on it, and he goes out and gets the job done for them. But I'm quite sure he would be content to just kick extra points from here on out. Yeah, absolutely no question. I think his teammates would be okay with him just kicking the extra points as well. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. Off of play action. Here's Smith. Now throw on the run, but that's going to be incomplete. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and ten. Geno out to throw. It's caught. Lock it. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. To the air again, Smith. Pass to the sideline and pulled in. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Third and four, he did just enough. I mean, just enough to move the chains. And that's all you're looking for, right? Just want to keep the drive moving. You don't need the big play there. Just get to that marker that you described, and he was able to do just that. They'll run on first down with Dallas. And he's able to work his way down inside the red zone to the 19-yard line. They get 17 on that one, move the chains, first down Seahawks. Partner, we always talk about how important third down is, but I think first down is equally important because 
everything comes off of that play. If the defense wins the down, they are able to attack. If the offense wins the down, they might go faster, do other things, and change things up. That big play right there allows this offense to really get in gear. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Now it's Smith off the bootleg. He hits his target, Lockett. Touchdown, Seahawks. Tyler Lockett, a 15-yard touchdown grab. And the Seahawks have taken the lead. Well executed there offensively. Defense looked a little confused, but he found his receiver, and that went good for six points. And the payoff we just saw there, tells us how many times they ran this play in practice over the past few weeks because they executed that flawlessly right here on game day when the situation arose. Myers connects on the PAT and the lead is now 10-7. Touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. And Williams going to sit on this one. It'll be a touchback. The offense coming back out, and there's Van Jefferson leading him. He's done his part, but so far it's been in a losing effort, so they've got to fix something. But that doesn't mean changing anything, the way they're throwing the ball around and his catches in production. Keep doing that. They're going to have to fix some things likely on defense to try and slow down their opponents. But so far, he's north of 100 yards receiving. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them. And not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they got a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. It's a return of four following a 42-yard punt. And they will take over first and 10. Tyler Lockett trotting onto the field, getting set for this next drive. Previous series, definitely a focal point. Three catches, the touchdown grab. As a DB, your former DB, is there a number of catches on a drive you're like, oh, he got the best of us? I'm not sure there's a number, but there's a great feel. And what he did on the last drive, yeah. <laughs> Especially with a touchdown. Yes. You're never he, happy. You're exactly right. The way he capped it off. So you feel that at the sideline, and now you're looking at your buddies and saying, okay, what are we going to do to take things away from him? Because I'm not sure the other guys can make those sort of players. So let's make sure that we don't let him get going again. Sticking with Walker on second down. And now off to the races down the right side. And he's going to get this one all the way down to the Rams' 36-yard line. All told, it's an even 30 and a first down. Even from up here in the booth, the play-by-play -play guy could tell that there was some pretty good blocking on the right side of the line. Well, you have good eyes, and it's almost like a ballet when it's executed that well. Everyone in the right spot, everyone in sync, everyone hitting the perfect notes. A little more percussion and a lot more yeah. bass, I would think, than you get your normal ballet. But at the same time, that was well executed. And going right back to Walker. 
And this defense not ready for that one as he'll take this down inside the 25. Add the gain here to the previous play, and it's better than 40 yards total. Great pickup by Walker. It was the second back off the board in the 2022 draft. But he was first among rookies in carries, yards, and touchdowns, and was rookie of the year runner-up. On first and 10, Smith. And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now after getting walked backwards on this drive. Come through with another one here, and you have them staring at a third and long, and that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and 10. Up the middle they run. It's Walker. And a strong run there as he'll maneuver his way down inside the 15. 10 yards and a Seattle first down. Offensive line right now really freeing up the rushing lanes on this drive. And we have to give them props. They've earned them. But these big runs that we're seeing, they don't result without everyone else being involved as well. Blocking on the perimeter has to take place downfield too. From the red zone now, Smith. And his throw here is incomplete. Tyler Lockett was the target there, but it'll be second down. Up the middle, here's Walker, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That's a big loss of three, and it brings up third down. Well, they've had success on the ground on this drive, and that makes a defense more likely to overcommit to stop the run as they did on that play. But keep in mind, it makes them susceptible to play-action passes as well. Third and long, it's Smith. That is caught inside the five. And the Seahawks are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. That's a fun one to watch right there. A nice in-breaking route and plenty of room in the middle of the field. And he was able to get behind the linebackers and grab the completion for a really good pickup. Two minutes remaining in the first half. 10-7, our score. It looks like a jumbo set with three tight ends here for first and goal. Walker will take this into the end zone for a Seahawk touchdown. But just power football there down near the goal line. Give it to him. He's able to push his way across. Yeah, they went heavy there. Sometimes you have those big offensive linemen come in after report like they're eligible. But all they're doing is getting a good stance, blocking, and getting their runner across the goal line. Extra point up and through by Myers. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. Touchdown, here's Myers to boot it away. And Williams going to sit on this one. It'll be a touchback. And the L.A. offense ready for this next possession. They find themselves down 17-7 as they start this drive first and 10. Back to throw, Stafford. That's out to the flat for Akers. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. Stafford barking out signals and trying to get his guys set quickly. Second and four. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. He shook his head right when he released that throw. He knew it was going to be a little off target. Yeah, the excitement got him on that one. Wasn't able to control the fact the receiver was open, and it would have been an easy throw. 
These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Out of the gun, Stafford. This one incomplete. Almost picked up by the rookie, but he couldn't quite look it in. And now it's fourth down. A misconnection there. He's hit on just 50% of his passes thus far. That's not where you want to be. Now you see the evolution of the game. You go back to the quarterbacks of old, 50% would be terrific because they threw the ball downfield almost every time they threw it. Now with the short passing game, you should be above 60% just to be in the average range. Back out now comes Kenneth Walker in the Seattle offense. So a six-carry drive, the last go-around touchdown on the end of it. We'll see if they can duplicate that here. I think that they would like to. I know every runner that we've ever met would love to carry the ball more and more and more. In fact, we keep a ball in the booth just for demonstration purposes. You're holding it right now. I'm going to give it to you. Is it is it heavy? Is it that heavy? No, it's pretty light. It's pretty light, right? So keep <laughs> giving it to him and let him do his work. It's not going to slow him down. If it's light for me, it's definitely light for him. He'll get five out of the scramble. It's second down. A shotgun snap for Smith. This is Fant on the short completion. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock's going to stop with 47 seconds to go in half number one. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Now Smith. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Thompson. They still need about the length of the football here, maybe a little less as they come up on second and inches. Short throw to Disley. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Throwing now is Geno. This is Fant on the short completion. Now the Seahawks forced to use their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 14 seconds to go in this first half. Second and nine. From the 50, it's Smith. And that'll be incomplete with just six seconds left on the clock. Now play number seven of this drive, but it's a tough third and nine. Smith. He's going to take a shot at the end zone. Why not? And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. So we reach halftime here in a 10-point game as we'll send you eastward to Orlando. Standing by with that EA Sports Halftime Report now is Jonathan Coachman. Take it away, Coach. All right, Brandon, back to you two in just a bit. But first, welcome everyone to downtown Orlando and our EA Sports Halftime Report. It was a former Comeback Player of the Year, Geno Smith, who was sharp in the first half. He's got a touchdown pass on the ledger as his guys were able to build a double-digit lead. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three.
Come on, let's go. Let's dominate this. A 10-point game, 17-7 to score as we get back to it on EA Sports. Dallas now to return it from his end zone. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. And the Seahawk offense set to go to begin this third quarter. But Charles, for them, pretty good first half on the ground. They had some success running the ball in quarters one and two, and they've got the lead. Now a chance to expand upon that lead here with their first drive in the third quarter. Yeah, and believe it or not, you and I have noticed that this great game of football has shifted towards pass first, run second. So for me, it is really nice to see some of these teams keeping the ground game is a big component of their offense, and it's working pretty well for them now. And let's face it, they can continue to do damage with it. And in addition, it sets up the pass game really well for them, too. Sticking with Walker on second down. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Well, that was a unit that understood exactly where the first down marker was, handed it to their guy who could run it, created some space, and he got there. Play action. It's Smith. He's got his big tight end fan. Uh, he's got this almost to the 40 before going out. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. Oh, I like that play call there. After a run for good yards, you get a defense thinking they'll go back to the well. So that's a great time to call play action and give your receivers a little extra edge. And they complete the pass there for another first down. The Smiths throw into the hands of Fan. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And it'll be second down. From the gun, here's Smith. This is Fant on the short completion. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. We always hear from coaches how much they like to run crossing routes because they want to hit their receivers on the go, get them the ball, and keep them moving. How about when you hit a tight end that way? Okay, the receivers are going to run past you most of the time. The tight end, they can do their damage a different way, break a few tackles and really scatter some people, can't they? They'll try for the first with Walker. That is not going to be any help as they dump him behind the line of scrimmage. Not at all what they envisioned on third down, three yards in the wrong direction. And they have just not been able to block him at all throughout this game. Seems like every other play, he's doing something in the backfield. Already got two sacks, and now here's a tackle behind the line. Now here's Michael Dixon as he's on to punt for Seattle. seven but bounds into the end zone and that'll be a touchback now the attention turns back to the Rams offense as they get ready for their first possession of the second half and their defense did its job by forcing the punt to start things out and now Charles can the offense get in gear I think partner you can sense them saying okay the first half was theirs but now let's get the momentum back on our side we forced a punt now let's go downfield and score if we do that we'll be set up well for this second half From the gun, here's Stafford. Short throw, it's Higby. And Higby going to have a Rams first down as he'll get this up to the 32. A six-yard pass on back-to-back -back plays. Picks up the first. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they've become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. Meanwhile, Stafford's throw here, hauled in by Cup. The result, only four yards there on the play, and it'll be second down. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. They'll work from the 36 on second and six. 
They'll go with Akers here up the middle. Oh, he's hit. He lost the football. Put it on the carpet. And the Seahawks have picked it up. And they'll take over inside the 45 at the 44-yard line. Do you remember in preseason when we were going to the different training camps and visiting teams, and we always would see the running backs working out and going through those gauntlet drills yep. and, you know, guys either slapping at the ball or the machines? you got to learn to take care of it. Yeah, they lost it there. Big fumble. And out now come the Seahawks. And both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively. Just not able to get anything going. So what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to how did each play work? Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back to some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. We'll see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. So from the 37, here's second down and three. Sticking with Walker on second down. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to lead to a third and four coming up. I know they've got to be careful not to go to the well too often, but it's a fine line, isn't it? Because sometimes, if you've got success, you want to just keep pounding away. But no success there. They rallied quickly on the defensive end. Out of the gun, Smith. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. One of the feature points of the in route is being able to make a nice throw to the middle part of the field. And for a quarterback, that's one of the better throws and better looks that he'll get. But he has to be careful not to wait too long and let his receiver wander into some tough territory. If he's late with the ball, he can get his receiver hit and hit hard. Now Gino on first down. This complete to Lockett. Will go down as a gain of six. And that's going to bring up second down. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. From the 22 now, here's the second and four. Now Gino. That's complete to Disley, the tight end. Second catch for him today, and they'll wind up the first down. Smith throwing again. And complete to Smith and Jigma. And that's good for a gain of six. And that'll bring up second down. behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. I thought he did a nice job there setting an edge and make sure nothing could get to the outside, but he decided that wasn't enough for him. Worked his way back inside and made the tackle on the ball carrier. Throwing on third down, Smith. He's got his target. That's complete. And the Seahawks are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Here's Walker. And this is going to result in losing yardage. They're driven back to the eight-yard line. And that's going to go as a loss of six, and it'll set them back for second down. And now defensively, you have to look at this like the game's on the line. It's just the third quarter, but another touchdown given up here could really spell an end to their chances. So they need to toughen up and keep them out of the end zone. To throw is Smith. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. The intended receiver was D.K. Metcalf, but now it's third and goal. Yeah. 
Gino down to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. The L.A. defense up the snuff in coverage there. Pushes this to fourth down. Great defense there on third and goal. They took away everything. Forced him to fire that one to the sideline where no one could get it. So on fourth down, here's Jason Myers for the Seahawk field goal. From the left hash, a chip shot here. Myers kick is good. And that will open the lead up now to 20 to 7. So the defense are able to force their first turnover of the game, and then they add on to that by getting the field goal. And you don't just want to take the ball away from your opponent, partner. You want to make them hurt as well. And if you don't score yourself on defense, turn it over to your offense and have them put points on the board. now converted on the field goal try now he's on to kick it away and he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22 here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession and last time they coughed it up led to a field goal they're fortunate that it only led to a field goal but still they're not happy about it. could you sense the relief though when they only gave up the field goal and they were able to trot back out on the field and start this drive with a little more pep in their step because they didn't cost their team a touchdown. But they know they've got to do it a lot better than they did on the last possession. The coach will just be relieved, though, if they recoup with a score here, right? I think coach will be ecstatic to see them pick themselves back up and now take it downfield and punch in the end zone without turning it over. Throwing quickly out wide at will. So that'll be no better than an incompletion. And third and eight now. If you're a wide receiver and they call a screen pass, you're counting on some people being out in front of you blocking. But that play was well diagnosed by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. And they got there and swarmed and finished off the play. Throwing on third down, Stafford. And that will be incomplete. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage. And just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. Here comes the Rams punter now as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. Fair catch called for and made at about the 32-yard line. A 40-yard punt, no return. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to come back onto the field. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, you think you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. They'll fake it. Now Smith. And incomplete. He was out there waving his arms, saying throw it here, dropped it. Not a good look. Well, all I can do is just look at him with contempt on that one. As a defensive back, I'm saying, not as an announcer. Just like, really? A little bit of a diva look, isn't it? Yeah, very much so. Because I think what happens is he just had too much time to think. He's wide open now. Here comes the ball. And he doesn't concentrate and drops it. Now it's Smith setting up the screen here. This is Walker. And they'll get him down at about the 37, well short of the first. They do get seven out of that, but not enough to prevent a fourth down. And that doesn't have to gain big yardage to be an impactful play because if you can get those pass rushers second-guessing themselves that they might get hit with a screen, maybe you can wind up slowing them down just a step. And if you do that, that's a win for that play. He's averaging just under 50 yards a punt as he gets this away. Fair catch signal for and take it at about the 15-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. Stafford and the Rams come up first and 10 at their own 16. He starts with a give to Akers. And that play going absolutely nowhere as 
Jones. He's belted before he could get out of the backfield. That one is blown up by Jordan Brooks, the linebacker. If these guys are going to chop into that deficit, they got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage, no yardage will be found. Second down, they'll go with Akers again. And again, the run defense stout this time. He maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage, but no more. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we play three quarters. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Third down now. Those last two plays indicative of how things have gone for them. Just nowhere to go on the ground and struggling to put up points. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Rams first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Good yardage on the completion there. And when they look at the scoreboard, they do understand a field goal is not going to do them any good. My guess, they're going to press the ball downfield as far as possible, try and throw it into the end zone and get a score because they know they've got to get that done and get the ball back as quickly as possible. On first down, Stafford here. Oh, he tried to fit it in on the slant and it's intercepted. Julian Love picks it. And he's going to take this one back to the 37-yard line. Well, time, I mean, certainly not on their side offensively. They had to take some chances, but that interception will further hinder their already slim chance at victory. Yeah, and you're talking about time not on their side, but it certainly is on the defense's side, and they understood that. They knew they had to press it a little bit, and they planned accordingly, and what a benefit for them, able to pick that one off and hopefully put this game away. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Running right, here's Walker. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. We knew both of these safeties were good in run support, but how about the play we just saw there? How about that closing speed? Able to get to the outside part of the field and turn that play into a loss. Smith now to throw. And the Rams got him. They bring him down. A well-designed corner blitz that gets him for a loss of eight yards. Now Charles dealing with a third and long. They'll have to try to go back to the air again, and this time avoid the sack. Certainly hard to try to establish momentum when all you're doing is going backwards, not protecting the passer, and he gets dumped on his backside. Well, the pressure gets to him again. Aaron Donald. Getting him once again, his third sack of the afternoon. Well, this has to count as a great team effort today, but this man, he's been at the center of all of it. Really special day for any defense to have this many sacks in a game, even more so for this player. One of the best individual efforts of the season. Now here's Michael Dixon as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. This is taken at about the 14. Nice punt, but good work on the return to get back 11 yards. L.A. readies for its next possession. Their defense was able to force the punt. That's the good news, but this is still a two-score game, and they need points on this drive and in a relatively quick manner. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice, or maybe even routes versus air, because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. Second and 10, Stafford again. Open man right side is cut, complete. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. That one good for 20 on the catch and run. This defense has certainly had an outstanding second half, haven't they? I know they just gave up a first down there and for the offense. They're hoping that that's something that they can jump start with and maybe start to move the ball a little bit better. But it's been tough sledding for them here the entire second half.
On first and ten, Stafford. Looking for Cooper Cup again, two in a row. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it'll be second down. Brings up second and three at the 48 yard line. To the air again, Stafford. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Oh, this defense knows. Fourth quarter, they need to make a play. That one was right for the taking. Could have changed the complexion of the ball game, but it winds up incomplete. The offense on third down, they're hitting at just 30%, three for 10. Here it's third and three. Stafford. Oh, they would have gotten the conversion if he could hold on. Instead, the drop means it'll be fourth down. No coverage bust by the defense here. They did a nice job accounting for everybody, and that led to an incompletion. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. They'll try and run for it. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. The time to pull out the stops is now, and they convert there on fourth down. Where they were on the field, kind of no man's land. Do you like the call? I love the call. Almost had to go for it there, right, because of what you just described. Too far for the field goal, too short for the punt. You might punt in the end zone and just give them good field position anyway. Let's go for it. Plus, they were moving the ball. They had confidence that they could pick up this last bit of real estate. So the completion good for just three, and that'll make it second down. A shotgun snap for Stafford. He'll get this one to Cup complete. Pulling a gain of three on the play, and that'll bring up a third down. Throwing is Stafford. He'll dump this off to Akers. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 27-yard line. The Rams, they are on the move. They've got another first down. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. Now a first down throw, Stafford. Middle of the field to Jefferson. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it's second down. It's a pickup of six. Brings up second and four at the 21-yard line. Again, it's Stafford. He finds Robinson. Touchdown, Ray! Demarcus Robinson from 21 yards away. And the Rams have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. I know these wide receivers are about flash and dash and high-flying plays, but a good number of them played running back at some point in their career, and that's how they finish off a lot of their big plays, run after the catch. And this time he finishes off the big play in the end zone. Extra point by Marr, up and good. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. Following the touchdown, here's Marr to kick it away. 
Dallas now to return it from his end zone. And just shedding him off there. And he returns this to the 22. And Seattle now ready to march out of the field. That last touchdown has made this really tight. They're clinging now to this slim lead. What, the, geez, the second half, they only have a field goal. This offense needs to kick it into gear. And right now, I'm looking directly at the field general, at the quarterback, because to me, he's got to take over right now. By word, pumping his team up, and then, of course, by deed with his play. High school coaches used to say that all the time. Laddie, take over by word and deed. And deed means action. Exactly. And partner to me, that one was all about timing. If he's there too early, it's going to be a pass interference call. If he's too late, it's a completed pass. He was Johnny on the spot on that one. They'll give it up to the big man Walker. And he can muster only a couple here to the 24. This defense starting to buckle down when they need to. And right now they're winning this fourth quarter, losing the game, but they're winning in the fourth quarter. And what a fine line it is about what they're trying to get done because... They're down, so they obviously need the football, need a score, but they can't be so aggressive as to give up their edge, their gaps, and have the offense hit them with a big play. Here's Smith. And the Rams got him. They bring him down. Aaron Donald, who else? He's in there for his fourth sack of the afternoon. Well, how about that? A dime set on defense, six defensive backs, None of them blitz. They're just back there in coverage. Defensive lineman gets the sack. That's where the O-line, they go to the sideline, they keep the, their helmets on so the cameras can't find them, right? Yeah, the cameras can't find them, but I know one thing, the O-line coach will. Now here's Michael Dixon standing just outside his own goal line. And a fair catch taken back near about the 35, 36 yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Rams will go on offense here with a first and 10. On first down, they'll start out with Akers. And taken down just shy of the 40. Ball on the 39. Here's second down and seven. To throw is Stafford. That'll be caught. It's caught. Touchdown, L.A. Cooper Cup, 61 yards. And the Rams strike quickly here to tie up the ball game. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, <laughs> all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. There aren't any speed limits out there? And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. A very important extra point there, up and good. And they have taken the lead here in this fourth quarter. Following the touchdown, here's Marr to kick it away. Dallas now to return it from his end zone. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. We couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and 10 here. Throwing is Smith. throw is going to be incomplete. Let's give some credit to the defensive guys on that play. Able to bat that one away. Sure looked like they were trying to hit the corner route. Smith, an incomplete pass on first down. Now it's second and ten. Hand off here to Walker. And he 
He's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 83 yards rushing now on 23 carries so far. Well, definitely see some open running lanes, and he's taking advantage of it right now, but that shouldn't be a surprise. Defense has the lead. They're playing for the pass first. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. A shotgun snap for Smith. Oh, that's into double coverage and intercepted. Picked off by Akello Witherspoon. And the Rams will take over here as they get it up to the 43-yard line. Ah, Brandon, this is a veteran quarterback back there. He should know better than to make a throw like this. This is definitely not his best ball. And I think he knew this was trouble the second it was leaving his hand. And we get a look at Cooper Cup as the Rams offense gets ready to take over possession. And I know that they double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. How many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. Clock continuing to run. They'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down. They'll fake it. Now Stafford going up top for Cup. And that will be incomplete. Try to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. Just because you got the lead in the fourth, it doesn't mean you have to play it safe. I like the aggressive play call there to push it downfield. That time, it didn't work out. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Stafford now to throw. And the Seahawks defense gets to him, and they bring him down. Mario Edwards flies in to blow that play up. Boy, every time I see speed like that off the edge, Charles, I just don't know how these offensive linemen do it. They, I would think that they would get called for holding every play, and maybe they should have been called for holding on that one. Yeah, maybe not just holding, but sometimes you end up setting back in the offensive backfield a little bit farther to try and help you with the edge. That's a penalty as well. Sometimes you overset, they'll come inside of you. That's what speed does. It disrupts an offense. And right now, you've got to pay attention to this edge rusher on every single down. This is first and 10. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. He finds Smith and Jigba. And a nice pickup there as he'll get about nine, and that will lead us to a stoppage here at the two-minute warning. Here's Smith now on second down. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. Now we're in the situation where the quarterback's got to take full charge of his home. Got to totally command and make sure all eyes are on him. All focus is locked in. Going to call multiple plays and go over different situations and scenarios to make sure everyone is on the same page. Here's Smith. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Aaron Donald in there to take him down, and the clock will roll. Partner, you absolutely cannot take a sack in that situation. Now, it's also fourth down. Got to avoid the flags defensively. Here's fourth and long. Desperation time for Smith on fourth down. And able to catch it, but he's out of bounds. And the throw took him beyond the sideline, and that's going to be a turnover on downs. So now it may look bleak, but this one not over. They do have all three timeouts. Even at this point on the field, where it looks like, I mean, you're, you're really backed up, Hold them to a field goal. That's the mantra right now. And I believe the referee's been buzzed. Yeah, they want to take another look at this call, and it's certainly a big one here late in a tight game. 
Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Well, here's the call. So the folks in New York just going to wind up confirming what the official saw as this play will stand as is. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Another run on second down, trying to cover up. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here comes third down at seven. Now it's Stafford. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. Touchdown! Matthew Stafford finding Cooper Cup for the touchdown there. And the Rams get an important score there to extend their lead here in this fourth quarter. And in this day and age, I would love to play quarterback in the NFL. Wide open offenses, acrobatic receivers. If you're accurate, you're going to have days like this. Mar now to add the extra point. And with that, the lead is up to eight. Scoring summary, three-play drive. And it ends with Cooper Cup on the receiving end of the touchdown pass. Following the touchdown, here's Marr to kick it away. Dallas now to return it from his end zone. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. So Geno and the Seahawks down 28-20, 65 seconds remaining. They've surrendered a double-digit lead but can rescue themselves late as they come up on first down. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. I don't know that those medium five-ish yard gains are going to do it right now. Probably should have dropped it, right? Yeah, that way you save more time on the clock. But I know receivers, they think they can catch it and break a tackle and turn it into a big gain. Now second and four. Smith. Pass incomplete, but the flag in the backfield, and this might be a roughing call. Football foul, roughing the pass for defense. Here's first down. Well, that's not one you see very often on Aaron Donald because we know he's not trying to do anything intentional, but that time, just a little too late for the officials liking. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. And remember, field goal does them no good in this situation. You got to think they should be taking some shots for the end zone soon. Now the Seahawks forced to use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with an even 20 seconds left to go. Twenty seconds remain. Here's second down. Smith's going to throw it. He's got Thompson here, complete. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. Well, how about keeping your head about you in this situation? No more timeouts. Finds a way to get out of bounds. Now they can breathe a little bit as they contemplate what to do on the next down. Now this offense cannot stop the clock now. No timeouts remaining as they come up here first down. on 
first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. A lot of practice time, a lot of thinking goes into two-minute drills, even on the defensive side. So now you want to make sure the guys understand. Continue to be aggressive, but make sure you're smart in doing so. They'll try again here, second and ten. Smith to throw. This ball intercepted. So the game will continue for at least one more play. Could not finish a game on a defensive penalty. That's why they get one more untouched. And this is going to be caught. Overtime. And understandably, this crowd is in an absolute frenzy. But they've got to back it off a little bit, let the guys operate, and they need to take a deep breath as well. They still got to get a two point conversion in order to tie this one. No time on the clock. Are we going to overtime, or does it end right here? And it is incomplete. They can't hook up for the two point conversion, and the defense celebrates a two point win. What a finish! Wow, partner, let's take a moment here to catch our breath. What a finish. They did get the touchdown that they so desperately needed, but they also had to have the two-point conversion. They couldn't get it done. And we got to start keeping oxygen tanks up here with us, don't we, <laughs> when we have games like this. But as you noted, such a dramatic ending. They got the points they needed to put themselves in position. And then the last big play, that effort, and they come up just a bit short. And the defense in that situation, you're on your heels. You're reeling offense for the momentum, but boy, credit to them for stepping up, getting the stop. Without a doubt, finding